On August 31st, 1997, a car accident occurred that stirred up the whole world. Thousands of people were crying. Millions were grieving. On that ill-fated evening, a woman who was able to change the face of the British monarchy died. A woman who had the courage to stand up against centuries-old rules and live the way she wanted. It was Diana Spencer, better known as Princess Diana. Her death is one of the most mysterious and the causes of the accident are still being discussed. Today, we will try to find out the existing facts and answer the questions. How were the last minutes of Diana's life? Why is the theory of drunkenness of the driver untenable? And what evidence indicates that the tragedy was not an accident? Welcome to the Biographer Express channel. We're starting. Last hours of the life of Princess Diana and her boyfriend, the son of Egyptian billionaire Dodi El Fayed, have been preserved on video. In the web, you can find the CCTV footage at the Ritz Hotel in Paris, where, among other things, you can see how Diana and Dodi on Saturday, August 30th, went to the hotel, and after midnight, they stood in the hallway, and a man hugged a princess. It was on August 30th that the couple arrived in Paris after a 10-day vacation on the French Riviera, where paparazzi tirelessly followed Diana and her companion. The Ritz Hotel, where they stayed, was owned by Dodi's father, Egyptian businessman Mohamed El Fayed. On Sunday, a few minutes after midnight, Diana and El Fayed left the hotel and got into a waiting Mercedes. Most likely, they were going to Dodi's private Paris estate. Near the hotel, despite the late hour, they were surrounded by a crowd of passers-by and paparazzi photographers. In order to avoid their close attention, the couple decided to use the back entrance, slip past the journalists. They came up with a plan to escape from the annoying crowd to take another car. To distract attention, a car without passengers drove away from the main entrance of the hotel, and Diana and Al Fayed got into another car in the backyard. But some photographers saw through the maneuver and set off in pursuit of Diana. From the very moment of her engagement to Prince Charles, Princess Diana suffered from the intrusive attention of hunters for exclusive pictures, but after her divorce from the heir to the throne, she became an even more interesting object for paparazzi. Well, even more so after rumors about her affair with a rich heir from Egypt got into the media. Diana was followed almost constantly, for every step or decision. Her personality was so popular that any unique news or photo could bring thousands of dollars to a journalist. The divorce from Charles was an incredibly difficult stage in her life, but at the same time it was able to give the princess freedom in her personal life, but not in public. The younger brother of the princess, Charles, once mentioned in an interview that after the divorce, Diana very often said that she wanted to leave the country because of the importunity of the media and their loud statements. Since the divorce, she was no longer protected by the royal security services. Her life turned into hell. Paparazzi caught up with Diana everywhere, grossly violating the right to privacy of her and her children. The eldest son, Prince William, recalled in an interview with the BBC that journalists pursued his mother everywhere and she constantly cried because of them. It got to the point that they could insult her, spit at her, just to wait for a reaction from Diana. And in fact, it follows from all this that the car crash was not just an accident, but the final point in the paparazzi's long-term pursuit of a sensation. On that ill-fated night, despite the stated limit of 30 miles per hour, the princess's driver, Henry Paul, drove the car to the entrance to the car tunnel on the Pont de Alma Bridge in Paris at a speed of about 70 miles per hour. Although later data surfaced that in fact the speed reached 93 miles per hour. Also, do not forget that a huge number of paparazzi were following the car in which the princess was, and it was for the same reason, that the speed of movement exceeded the specified norm at times. According to reports, Paul lost control and crashed into a pole in the middle of the tunnel. Henry Paul and Dodi El Fayed were pronounced dead at the accident scene, and Diana, still alive, was taken to hospital. Early reports said she had been diagnosed with a concussion, a broken arm, and a cut hip, as well as severe chest injuries. Later, the writer Tina Brown in the biographical book The Diana Chronicles described the scene of an accident. According to Dr. Frederick Maliez, an ambulance doctor who was driving through the tunnel at the time of the car accident, Diana woke up after being hit by pain due to internal injuries. She kept saying how much she hurt, Maliez recalled in a conversation with Brown. Sergeant Xavier Gramellan, who led the response team in Paris, told The Independent that Diana's last words were, Oh my God, what's happened? She turned her head and saw the lifeless Doty just in front of her, then turned her head again toward the front where the bodyguard was writhing and where Henry Paul lay dead. 
She became agitated, then lowered her head and closed her eyes. Tina Brown. Gormelin claimed that at first glance, the princess did not have fractures or open bleeding. After a cardiac arrest, she was able to be resuscitated and taken to the hospital alive. To be honest, I thought she would live. As far as I knew, when she was in the ambulance, she was alive, and I expected her to live," recalled one of the rescuers. For two hours, doctors unsuccessfully tried to make Diana's heart, shifted to the right due to a fracture, beat normally again. But she died of internal bleeding without regaining consciousness at 4.53, August 31, 1997. In the 2000s, the famous cardiac surgeon Christian Bernard analyzed the data on the princess's injuries. He concluded that if she had been taken to the hospital within 10 minutes, Diana would have remained alive. In a telephone interview with the Sunday Telegraph, Bernard said he was shocked by the autopsy results and that he considered it a mistake to help the victim at the scene of the accident. Only surgical intervention could help stop the internal bleeding. But what about the cause of the accident? Officially, Diana's death was investigated twice, in France in 1999 and in the UK in 2008. Both of them came to disappointing and rather superficial conclusions. The British police have published an investigation report, which was known to us as Operation Paget. It stated that the tragedy was caused by an accident. In general, the cause of the tragedy was considered to be the reckless driving of Henry Paul. The alcohol level in his blood was three times higher than normal. There were also faulty seatbelts and, of course, the irresponsible behavior of the paparazzi who actually made Paul exceed the speed limit in order to break away from the chase. Even after the car collision, the journalists did not let up. Firefighter Damien Dalby said in an interview that upon arrival, he saw how the paparazzi surrounded the car and continued to shoot the incident. des gyrophares, en fait. Euh, en me disant, bah voilà, il y a les pompiers, il y a la police euh, à l'entrée du tunnel, mais en fait, effectivement, non, c'était euh, beaucoup de flash. Nevertheless, the press was not satisfied with this explanation of the unexpected death of the princess, and literally immediately, various theories began to leak into the newspapers that considered possible causes of Diana's death. Some were so convincing that, with the assistance of the Daily Express newspaper and Mohammed Al Fayed, the father of the deceased Dodi, the police had to test 175 theories about what happened that night. At the time of the princess's death, 85% of British residents believed that Diana had been murdered. Such theories are being discussed to this day, so we suggest you talk about some of the most common. So, according to Mohammed Al Fayed, M16 killed Diana and Dodi on the orders of the royal family, in particular Prince Philip, because Diana was pregnant with Dodi's child. The father of the deceased admitted that Diana and his son told him about the child. The couple were also going to announce their engagement, which according to Muhammad, was unpleasant for the royal family because they could not accept that an Egyptian Muslim could become the stepfather of the future King of England. Therefore, M16 allegedly organized a special operation to kill Diana and Dodi. However, a post-mortem examination of Diana's body did not show pregnancy. Tests of her blood found at the scene also did not show an increase in hormone levels. During Operation Paget, the testimony of close friends was discovered, which stated that in mid-August 1997, Diana had a normal menstrual cycle and that she used contraceptives. According to the memoirs of her close friend, who stayed with her for a week shortly before the tragedy, Diana was definitely not pregnant, for physiological reasons. As for the offer, although Dodi bought the ring, there is no evidence that it was given to Diana at the time of her death. Testimonies from close people, including her butler and confidant Paul Burrell, also suggest that Diana was least of all thinking about marriage. According to Lady Annabel Goldsmith, who spoke to Diana two days before her death, Diana stated, I need marriage like a rash on my face. In conversations with friends, the princess claimed that she was not going to jump into another marriage right after she got out of the first one. The investigation also noted that Diana had just ended a two-year relationship with another Muslim, Surgeon Hasnat Khan. The couple even considered the idea of marriage which did not cause alarm in the royal family, and by all accounts, they even gave their blessing to it. Even if the theory of the princess's pregnancy has disappeared, then a possible murder cannot be ruled out. As we said earlier, if Muhammad's statements were to be believed, M16 engaged in a covert operation to have Diana's car crash. The main motive for the murder is precisely the statement 
that the Princess of Wales can marry a Muslim, which will entail her imminent conversion to the Islamic religion and absolutely different consequences for the royal family. The central place in this statement was occupied by the theory that the driver of the car, Henry Paul, was an informant of the special services who might even have deliberately provoked the accident. Paul was the head of security at the Ritz Hotel in Paris, where Diana and Dodie stayed. Suspicious funds in Henry's bank account, as well as the testimony of Richard Tomlinson, a former M16 officer, suggested that Henry was sponsored by M16. As for Henry's blood alcohol level, conspiracy theorists have suggested that the sample was taken from another person, not from Henry. They think Henry was sober that night. However, Operation Paget confirmed eyewitness accounts that Henry had been drinking that evening. According to witnesses, Paul drank about two shots two hours before he got behind the wheel. Numerous blood tests confirmed the increased alcohol content in his body. As they say, it was three times higher than the permissible norm in France, 1.75 ppm. To confirm the fact that the blood really belonged to the driver, DNA tests of his parents' blood were carried out. And what was interesting, a group of scientists conducted an experiment in which one of them was injected with exactly the same dose of alcohol. After that, the subject was put in a car simulator. According to the results of the experiment, Paul would not be able to drive at all with such a concentration of alcohol in his blood. And according to the side cameras of the Ritz Hotel, which captured not only Diana, but also Paul, the driver did not look drunk at all. Even with such a degree of intoxication, as indicated in official documents, he had to move with difficulty. On the contrary, he walked with a confident gait, without any signs of intoxication. If I had uh, three times over the legal limit, I would be on the floor, and I think so would you. And it's even been put to me at times four times over. I mean, look at the pictures. Michael Cole, spokesman for Mohammed Al-Fayed, was of the same opinion during the investigation of the tragedy. Even more mysterious was the fact that the official report found a high content of carbon monoxide in the blood of Henry Paul. With such an amount, a person has symptoms of intoxication, headache and vomiting, clouding of consciousness. But nothing similar was observed for the bodyguard. The French authorities claimed that the source of carbon monoxide in the blood of the Paul was the airbags, which burst at the time of the collision. But adherents of the theory of murder claimed that the concentration of the substance in the airbags was so small that it was not enough to cause poisoning of such strength. As a result, the explanation of this fact has not been found, but Henry's friends denied that the driver would have driven drunk. Claude Garrick, Paul's friend, recalled. As for his ties to M16, the investigation concluded that Henry could have been an informant for the French secret services, but no evidence was found that he was an M16 assassin. In fact, he wasn't supposed to work that night, and Diana and Dodie's plans changed at the last minute, which refuted the possibility of a deliberate conspiracy. This, by the way, explained why he could drink alcohol before the trip. His working day ended at 7 p.m., and only a couple of hours later, the service of the Ritz Hotel called him with instructions to get behind the wheel of a car with high-ranking clients. As for the paparazzi chasing Diana, according to Stefan Darman, a motorcyclist of one of the paparazzi who chased the Mercedes that night, the photographers present at the scene did not help the injured passengers of the car in any way. Instead, they actively shot the scene of the tragedy. I did not see the car anymore because the light was so bright, Darman told The Guardian in 2008. Immediately after the accident, seven French photographers were arrested and questioned by the police. According to the New York Times, charges of manslaughter were brought against nine photographers who followed the car and took pictures of it after the crash, but they were acquitted. The journalists denied their guilt. So, in an interview, photographer Jacques Langevin said that they did their job, but did not go beyond and did not interfere with the movement. Photographe qui est suivi ou pas suivi la voiture, c'est pas ça qui cause l'accident, c'est pas vrai. Là, y a quelque chose qui va pas non plus. However, there was one point that alerted the princess's family as well. Traces of an old white Fiat Uno were found by criminologists at the scene of the Mercedes collision. According to eyewitnesses, there really was a Fiat in the tunnel, but after the accident, the car instantly disappeared from the crime scene, and it was no longer found within Paris. Well, or it was just badly searched. On the eve of the 25th anniversary of Diana's death, a documentary series investigating Diana, Death in Paris, was released under the direction of the British Channel 5. 
According to their own investigation, it was probably Fiat Uno that caused the disaster. The proof of this was the traces of white paint that were found on Diana's mangled car. During the investigation, 103,000 Fiat Uno cars were examined. We were accused of running the most expensive investigation in the world, but we didn't have a choice, Martin Montal, head of the Homicide Investigation Department, recalled. Suspicion immediately fell on the French photographer James Andenson, who had previously photographed the couple at the Alfayette Villa in St. Tropez and owned exactly the same white Fiat. According to Doty's father, the accident could have occurred due to the fact that Anderson's car cut the Mercedes off, as a result of which the driver lost control and crashed into the wall of the tunnel. Anderson completely denied his involvement in the tragedy. According to him, he had not used the car for a long time, and it was not in the right condition to catch up and cut off the Mercedes, which was racing at a speed of about 93 miles per hour. And the investigation agreed with him. Soon, the journalists hurried to sell his Fiat urgently, but even this did not arouse suspicion. There were no traces of Mercedes paint on Anderson's car anyway. But it was interesting that three years later, the photographer died under mysterious circumstances. He was found burned in his own car. The investigation has not found the culprit. In my mind, the only door that remains open is the testimony of the driver of the Fiat Uno. Eric Cago, a representative of the Paris Criminal Brigade, said, Well, until we get to the strangest and perhaps even slightly crazy theory about the death of the princess, we suggest you subscribe to our channel and click on the bell so as to not miss new videos. And we continue. Up to this point, it was said that the murder of the princess could have been ordered. But now we will tell you a theory that says the special services could have killed Diana on their own, not counting on someone else's orders. In fact, conspiracy theorists have not yet decided whose intelligence service, Great Britain, France, or the United States, took care of the elimination of the Princess of Wales. In any case, the supporters of this theory have no doubt that special agents are to blame for Diana's death. In their opinion, such accidents are commonplace for the Secret Services. They just need to prepare the scenery and props in advance. The first thing that raised questions from the investigation after the accident was the unplanned replacement of the Princess's Mercedes. The guests of the Ritz were provided with another car which had its own malfunctions. For example, the seatbelts did not work for some reason only in the back seat, where Diana and her lover sat. And not everything was clean with the car itself, too. For the first time, information about its purchase appeared in 1994, and three months later it was stolen and broken. Later, it was bought by the Ritz Hotel. The princess, by the way, as her friends testify, has always been very suspicious about her safety. So if the belts had been in good order, she would have probably worn it and, who knows, maybe even survived. After all, Diana's strapped-in security guard escaped death. Due to the fact that the car had already had some accident earlier, the driver was forbidden to reach a speed of more than 37 miles per hour, as it allegedly stopped driving normally. But, as luck would have it, the princess's Mercedes was being chased by paparazzi that night and they couldn't escape from them at such a modest speed. Why were such distinguished guests served a faulty car? Finally, the culmination of the operation was the entry of the car into the tunnel, in which none of the 14 cameras worked. The latter was explained by the fact that surveillance in this area was controlled not by the police, but by the Paris Public Transport Society, an organization that closed at 11 p.m. The cameras remained on, but they did not record anything and the only chance to see what was happening was to make a person sit in front of the monitor. There was no such person that night. The driver was also helped to lose control. First, he was cut off, which was exactly proven, and then blinded by a bright flash of light. Yeah, it was the one the photographer was talking about. The flash was also seen by eyewitnesses of the incident, so one of them, Francois Levistre, told, Que de poissons à la voiture, là il y a le flash blanc pour éblouir La, la personne qui est au volant. Un flash ne laisse pas de trace. Such a technique, as Richard Tomlinson, a former M16 employee, later told the investigation, was a favorite technique of the special services. According to him, intelligence invented this method specifically for the assassination of Yugoslav leader Slobodan Milosevic in 1992. When the accident first happened, um, it didn't really occur to me that it was in any way related, but it, what made me realize very, very strongly was with a witness report that there was a very bright light in the tunnel. And as soon as I heard that, that made me click two or two things together. 
But the, the combination of the bright light and the tunnel was made me think straight away, well, maybe it wasn't an accident. Although later, Metropolitan Police, which intelligence kindly opened the doors of its archives specifically to verify the testimony of its former employee, denied Mr. Tomlinson's words. It turned out that the British had no plans to kill Milosevic. The police then found an assassination plan of another Serbian politician. However, there were no hints of the use of the flash. In 2014, a Special Forces sniper told the Sunday Times that he was the organizer of the murder of the princess. However, the police did not find confirmation of his words. But what was missing was the ambulance that quickly arrived at the scene of the accident. Doctors were called at 0026 at night, but Princess Diana was taken to the hospital only by 206. It was too slow for such a high-ranking patient. But according to the data, the ambulance arrived at the scene in six minutes. She was taken slowly due to the fact that in Diana's condition, any shake could lead to death and the hospital where the ambulance was going specialized in serious injuries, in particular, chest ones. It's still pretty suspicious, isn't it? Do you think the accident could really have been staged? If so, be sure to share with us in the comments which of the above theories seems more realistic to you. Well, finally, we present the most fantastic theory of Diana's death but she also has followers. According to them, the Princess of Wales deliberately conceived her own death in order to start a new life away from the paparazzi, the royal family, and fans. Some sci-fi conspiracy theorists came to this idea when faced with several facts at once. Firstly, sometime before the tragedy, Diana repeatedly admitted to her loved ones that someone wanted to kill her and even foresaw that it would be an accident. Such evidence exists. For example, the butler of the princess, Paul Burrell, had a letter that Diana sent in 1993 in which she admitted that she foresaw her death. The former butler told this information in his book, A Royal Duty, which he releases years later. He allegedly gave a copy of the letter to the Daily Mirror. According to the princess, it had to be an accident that would open the way for Charles to marry his mistress. This particular phase in my life is the most dangerous. My husband is planning an accident in my car brake failure, and serious head injury in order to make the path clear for him to marry. Another document confirming Diana's concern was the Mishkan Note, a document that was handed over to the authorities by the princess's legal attorney, Victor Mishkan. According to him, during their joint meeting in the fall of 1996, Diana outlined to him a number of indisputable, as it seemed to her, facts of an impending attempt on her life and health. The princess named the method of the allegedly impending murders. According to her informant, the attackers will disable the brakes, Lord Mishkin took notes of everything the young woman said, but did not take her concerns seriously. But even despite the tragedy, Mishkin was sure that everything the princess claimed was just a delusion of persecution and the coincidence was pure chance. Perhaps this was how Diana was preparing the ground for her own fake death, and this was how she wanted to set Charles up, whom she hated. Well, the scenario was similar to a high-quality thriller, but still difficult to implement outside the set. Secondly, Proponents of this theory point out that no one has shown the princess's body to the general public. Her body was buried in a closed coffin, and only a few people had a chance to see her in the last minutes before she went to the secluded Spencer Island in Northamptonshire. Officials explained this by the fact that the princess had a badly damaged face after the collision. But according to the testimony of Xavier Gramellan, who was one of the first to arrive at the crash site, Diana's face was not disfigured during the accident. Writer Monica Ali, who studied the life and death of Diana for her book, suggested that the princess could have faked her death in order to start living a new life. Yeah, knowing the strong enough persistence of the Princess of Wales, such an idea could well visit her and even be implemented. But would she do it? This scenario is only suitable for crazy conspiracy theories. The death of Princess Diana, of course, greatly affected her children, especially Harry, who was then a teenager. Later in a documentary project called The Me You Can't See, he spoke about the anger he felt about the consequences of his mother's death. I was so angry with what happened to her and the fact that there was no justice at all. Nothing came from that. The same people who chased her into the tunnel photographed her dying in the backseat of that car. Six days after her death, Diana was buried at her family estate in Althorpe, England. Her funeral at Westminster Abbey was watched or listened to by approximately 2.5 billion people around the world and about one million people took to the streets of London to pay a last tribute to her. A carpet of bouquets stretched outside her home in Kensington Palace in Kensington Gardens. There was also a scandal. 
The reason for it was that in connection with the death of Princess Diana, flags over the buildings of official institutions throughout London were lowered everywhere, except Buckingham Palace. According to royal protocol, when the Queen was in the palace, the royal standard was raised. It was removed only after her departure. This meant that in the absence of the Queen, no flag could be lowered. The Queen could not decide for a long time whether to lower the Union Jack over Buckingham Palace or not. Later, a compromise was found because the Queen was present at the funeral and the royal standard was removed and the national flag of Great Britain was lowered. Later, a memorial garden was opened in her honor in the former home of the princess where her son William, Prince of Wales, his wife Catherine, Princess of Wales, and their children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louise now live. Diana has experienced many difficult moments in the last years of her life, but she was and remains a cult figure who influenced millions of people. Maybe that's why theories about her death will never stop appearing. Many similar conjectures and theories surround other famous people who have passed away ahead of time. An actor and martial artist, Bruce Lee, is among them. It would seem that so much has been written about the last hours of his life, but no one knows the truth anyway. He lay down to rest and did not wake up. Is there any reason to call his death a murder? What role did Bruce Lee's mistress play in this? And what incredible discovery has shed new light on the death of a man who became a martial arts reformer? Click on the video that appears on your screen and find out the details. And Biographer Express was with you. Like this video and see you later.